everyone, today we're going to be checking out the new Osmo Pocket 3 from DJI. This is a tiny little camera attached to a gimbal that is capable of filming in up to 4K 120 FPS. And we're going to be testing it out today for both photo and video. We're going to start off by testing out the gimbal by doing some vlogging shots. And you might notice I do have the DJI Mic 2 attached to me as well. And I'll let you know when you're listening to my lav mic, the DJI mic, or the mic of the Osmo. I'll put it up somewhere on the screen for you to know. So this Pocket 3 has a mechanical three axis gimbal attached to the camera and I'm going to start off by walking around a little bit so we can see how stable the footage looks. Currently, bye Dan, <laughs> I'm currently at the park so we have pretty uneven ground to walk on. I'm about to walk up a hill and I'm not keeping, I'm not trying to keep the camera too steady. I'm switching my hands around and we'll see what that all looks like. Here I'm walking at a pretty brisk pace and I'm going downhill currently. So again, we'll see how stable the footage looks. I can see the camera like bouncing around, so I'm curious to see what that looks like. Even when I tilt the gimbal at a 45 degree angle, it's doing a really good job at keeping the horizon line straight. So when I'm doing these vlogging shots and shots of people, I've been using face auto detect to be able to track my face or Dan's face in the shot. When I rotate back to selfie mode, the framing of the get-go is a little bit awkward as you can see there, but because I'm in that mode, I'm gonna hit record. And then I'm gonna put my face in the center of the square there so it can detect my face. And once it's done that, it's gonna start tracking me and it's gonna keep my face in the center of the frame. So let's test out how well it does that. Face tracking works in both horizontal and vertical filming which is great to see however there is no face tracking in low light or in 120 fps for these examples i have face tracking set to normal speed which is what it's set to out of the box you also have the option to change it to slow for smoother camera movements or fast for abrupt movements i think it's done a really great job at keeping the subject in the center of the screen even if it did lose us which happened just a couple of times when dan and i were trying to hide our faces it was sometimes able to find us again it also does a really good job at keeping focus on a moving subject even when there are a lot of distractions and movement happening. When I am walking directly towards the camera, if I walk too fast, you can see it slipping focus for a split second. But aside from that, in the majority of other scenarios, I found it kept focus steady on the subject. If you don't want your subject to be in the center of the frame with active track, you can also use dynamic framing as well. So let's test it out. So basically there's nine squares up on the screen and you can use the joystick to select where you want your subject to be framed when they're getting tracked. So now it keeps you framed in the corner. I have a great shot here where we've got a little bit of color, some shade and some highlights to test out the color profiles of this Osmo. We have normal color, we have HLG and we have D-Log M. For those before and afters, I am using my own conversion LUTs. So I'm gonna get more B-roll so we can take a better look at the camera quality in some different lighting situations. I really love that building over there, so let's go that way. It deals with the backlight pretty well, like you're cutting through in the shot really nicely. And there's not much of a lens flare either. That's very clean. This Pocket 3 is using a one inch CMOS sensor with 10 bit color depth. In standard picture profile, which is all the footage you've been watching at the beginning of the video, it does a good job at producing balanced tones with enough contrast to make the footage look nice and punchy. The colors look great too, the footage is vibrant without being overly colorful, and we have great skin tones in various lighting situations. HLG and D-Log color profiles are really easy to work with as well to get it looking the same as the normal profile. The gimbal camera can be charged to 80% in 16 minutes and can film up to 120 minutes of 4K 60fps. You can also use the external handle for extra battery life. The handle also gives you extra reach and includes a quarter inch thread so you can attach the tripod legs to it or attach it to other mounts. We have a two inch rotatable screen and I love how easy it is to rotate. I can just do it with my index finger, I just flick it and it goes. 
So it films in horizontal and up to 4K and it films in vertical mode and up to 3K. So here's some vertical shots for you to have a look at. The screen looks amazing. It's very clear and easy to see out on location too, even in brighter sunlight. You can swipe in different directions on the screen to get to certain menus. It's probably just me, but sometimes I found it hard to swipe and had to do it multiple times for the menu to come up. The Pocket 3 weighs 180 grams, so it would be very unobtrusive to travel with or use daily. Here I have a size and video comparison between the Pixel 8 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I personally prefer what the Osmo footage looks like. You have great clarity while not being over sharpened like the iPhone. There is no noise like the Pixel footage and you have slight background to foreground separation to help the subject stand out. The skin tones are nice and neutral in the Osmo 2. We do also have a photo mode and we have the option to shoot in RAW plus JPEG and also with continuous focusing as well. So I'm gonna take a couple of photos and show you the quality. We have a one inch sensor, so these photos should look good. This background is so cool. I have to take a selfie in front of this wall of flowers. The image quality for photo is nice and sharp, but the photos are quite small since they are only 4K, which works out to be around 8.3 megapixels. There are two new magnetic filters. We have a black Promis filter and also a wide angle filter. So I'm gonna get a comparison shot right here. See what the black Promis looks like in the sun. I really like both these new filters that you can purchase separately. The Pro Mist is an effect I personally love because it creates a soft and dreamy style. There is no visible loss of quality with the wide angle filter. The footage is still nice and sharp with great colors and these are all in the normal color profile. We're gonna try out 4K 120p. I'm gonna try some different shots in some different lighting as well. So we're gonna start off here in the shade. 120p produces a 29.97 FPS file. The quality is very similar to 4K 60p. It's sharp and overall has good colors. In slow-mo, the effects of 420 are a little more noticeable in high dynamic range scenes. If you keep an eye on Dan's shirt, you can see it turning a little pink in sections. Before we move on to low light, we have to do a microphone test. So right now you're listening to my lav mic. This is what I use for all my videos. So pretty standard audio for me. Now we're gonna switch over to the microphone of the Osmo Pocket 3. So this has omnidirectional stereo recording. And right now as I'm talking, I'm in the vlogging function. So the camera and the screen are facing towards me. And I'll just talk a little bit so you can hear what the microphone sounds like. Now I'm standing in front of the camera as if I'm filming someone else. So I'll talk a little bit so we can hear what this different microphone sounds like. There is quite a lot of noise at the park today. There's like people playing basketball down the street. It's a little bit breezy as well. So again, we'll see what that else sounds like and a dog barking too. Now I've switched over to this microphone, which is the DJI Mic 2. And this is what the audio sounds like when it's being transmitted to the Pocket 3. And there's quite a lot of noise going around. There's heaps of birds flying and squawking and people playing in the background too. Last but not least, I have a low light test. So this right now is ISO 50. Low light performance is great. We have pretty clean footage at these high ISOs, especially up to 9,600, which is pretty impressive. You lose a bit of sharpness at the two highest ISOs, but I think they are still usable in a pinch. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Osmo Pocket 3. This little device is highly capable of filming great quality, stable footage with its one inch sensor. I personally am going to start taking this with me on my travels to capture some extra footage where having a big camera is not convenient. For me, I especially love the fact that you can film in up to 120 FPS in 4K and active track is such a useful feature too in both vertical and horizontal. Let me know what you think. So I'm back down to ISO 200, but that is all I have for today's video. I really hope you found that helpful and enjoyed watching. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. But as always, I make new videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.